I gotta put my timer on. <laughs> Get myself in trouble. Nobody said, no, preach it. They're like, we know Pastor Thompson. <laughs> They're not, they stopped saying preach it. <laughs> anyway, oh, the timer's already up here, I see. <laughs> Wow, is this just installed this morning? <laughs> anyway, I want to thank Pastor Pazarnsky and Ms. Pazarnsky for, and, and the whole, I mean the Stand Fast family, I mean Hold Fast family for all the hospitality. I'm just kidding. Uh, I just want to give them a little ribbon because, you know, that's what we pastors do behind closed doors, but I'll just do it openly in front of all. No, I, I really appreciate Pastor Pazarnsky. He's a good friend of ours. And Mrs. Pizarnski and the, the family hold fast. We're so thankful for, to be here today. And uh, I'm going to preach a soul winning sermon, but I'm going to run away and not go soul winning today. So I'm sorry I have to catch a plane. That's just how it is, though. But uh, the title of the sermon this morning is Recharging Your Soul Winning Battery. Recharging Your Soul Winning Battery. Let's go ahead and turn to Acts chapter number one. Acts chapter number one. And for sake of time, I'm just going to read three verses. Here in Acts chapter number 1, look at verse number 6. The Bible says, When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the, or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you so much for Hold Fast Baptist Church and for the pastor and, and just everybody that showed up today to go soul winning in your, in your harvest, Lord. We just pray that you would just bless uh, everybody as they go out, that they'd be very fruitful. Lord, we just want to um, also uh, have a special prayer, Lord, for Brother Shaw and Miss Ava and the loss of their child. We just pray that Lord, that you'd uh, comfort their hearts and, and help them and, and help uh, the, the Verity family and, and everybody else to just be a blessing to them in whatever way they can. And uh, Lord, I pray that you would just fill me with your spirit as I begin to preach your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So Acts chapter 1, obviously this is where Jesus kind of gives his final orders as to what they're supposed to be doing next. And basically he just left us with that we need to go soul winning. And he said... Ye shall receive power. And who do we receive that power from? We receive that power from God. So recharging our soul winning batteries, you know, sometimes we can get to the point where we're just like, you know, I just don't really feel like going soul winning right now. Or, you know, maybe we just need to change some things up. And, and so I just kind of want to give some, some, uh, some inspiration to keep going. Obviously, I'm preaching to the choir here. But, like, back at your own home churches sometimes it can be like, well, you know, and, and you want to go to an event like this instead of going soul winning at your own church. And I, I would just say this, that you need to stay soul winning at your own church also. But it's good to come to things like this because it can recharge your soul winning battery. So now God gave us the power. He gave us the power of the Holy Spirit. But sometimes we can quench the spirit and sometimes the flesh can take over. So we don't want that to happen. So again, I'm just going to give you a few things this morning about recharging your soul winning batteries. But... Um, let's look at verse 8 again. The Bible says, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem. So the Jerusalem for this church would be this Hold Fast Baptist Church, this city, uh, Fresno, California. And in all Judea, I guess that would be California, the state of California. And in Samaria, you know, I guess that would be Mexico and Canada, our, our borders. And then unto the uttermost parts of the earth. That means just else. So we have been commissioned to reach the whole world one place at a time. And so I went on this trip to uh, Toronto last week and uh, I just wanted to talk a little bit about that. And it was like, it was a great trip. There was, uh, and I'll read the stats to you in just a second, but um, I, even though I got sick, it was still a great trip and I got to uh, um, go so many a few times when I was there. But I literally met people from many nations, many descents, white, Italian, Hispanic, Asian, black, Latino, German, French, Canadian, American, and, you know, and probably a bunch of other nations that I'm probably forgetting. But it was like a melting pot type of soul winning marathon. 
And the entire marathon was Friday, July 28th to Monday, August 7th. So it was a long marathon. There was like all these events and things going on and, and different. it took place in America and then up in Canada. And there was 187 salvations as a result of all those people going out soul winning. And I'm just going to read you kind of the, 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 the wrap up of the, uh, the marathon itself. It was 187 salvations, the main soul winning days Thursday was a full day, had 25 soul winners, 47 salvations. Friday morning, 30 soul winners, 28 salvations. Saturday, full day, 36 soul winners, 72 salvations. And the, these uh, invitations that we were handing out had um, QR codes for the Bible Way to Heaven. And when you, when you scan that code, it takes it to whatever language your phone is in. So if you're a Spanish speaker or whatever, just whatever language your phone is in, it automatically converted the Bible way to heaven to that language. It was really cool. Like, I want to definitely incorporate that into our invitations. But so that's from BibleWayToHeaven.com, BW2H.com. So if you pull up that site and your phone is in English, it's going to be an English one. But you can also click on it, and it'll you can go to all the different languages that are already on it. It was really cool. But I wanted to give you the stats for that too. So um, last, the, uh, so for the marathon, there was 56 clicks on that particular QR code for the Bible Way to Heaven. And then on the back side, there's a preaching and documentary site that had 30 clicks on it. Friday, the pre there was preaching, food, fellowship, and uh, everybody watched the LGBT terrorist film. So there was uh, 60 in attendance on that day. So on the trip I met, I was sitting uh, there for dinner. It was a great event, but uh, I was sitting there for dinner and I met a man named Aaron from Germany. He was already a man after my own heart after meeting him. So, And uh, he came there with his girlfriend. His girlfriend's name was Nevi Mika. And she was born in a place that I'd never heard of called Kang Kangersuk. Uh, and it was over a thousand miles north of Montreal. So if you don't know where that is, I didn't know either. I had to look it up on a map. But we were all kind of sitting at the same table together and I just started you know, chatting with them and um, I knew that she was probably like of some sort of Native American or Native descent and uh, when I asked her if she was Inuit, which is like kind of like what we would call Eskimo I guess, but that's offensive to them I guess uh, in some places so <laughs> I don't know. I'm sure it's not you know how it is so anyway but uh, the Inuit people are natives from the north regions of the earth. And Inuit is, um, it means the people are a group of culturally similar, similar indigenous peoples inhabiting the Arctic and subarctic regions of Greenland, Labrador, Quebec, Nunavut, and Northwest Territories and Alaska. Inuit languages are part of the Eskimo language, uh, Eliot, Languages, I probably said that wrong. Also known as Inuit and also Askalut. I'm saying all that wrong probably, but I'm sorry. I don't speak that language. And I've never said those words in my life. So anyway, I just <laughs> when you when you put it on paper, it's just like, oh yeah, I can pronounce that. And you're like, uh, never mind. So but the population of the town that she was from is 561 people. It became a permanent settlement in 1921, and for centuries it was an Inuit. Uh, hunting and fishing uh, like location that people, there wasn't like a permanent settlement there. Um, they found Viking settlements there at some point. The average temperature there is minus 18.5 in January. In July, it's an average of 53.8 uh, degrees high. So they get highs of 55. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's cold. Like, that to me, that's to you in California, that's freezing, isn't it? <laughs> so, but anyway, so there, there's like 14 communities up in that area, about six or 700 people total. And the only way to get there is by plane. If you try to Google search the name of the place where she's from, it says Google can't find a way to get there. And so <laughs> I was just, I was interested in how she got saved because she's from such a, a far away region, way. I mean, a thousand miles north of Montreal in Canada. So I was interested in how she got saved. She told me that her cousin got her saved watching New World Order Bible versions. Well, she got, or her cousin got saved watching New World Order Bible versions. And I said, well, did he get saved watching it in that town? Yes. So somehow 
New World Order Bible versions, Bible Way to Heaven, got to her cousin, you know, a thousand miles, north, you know, the uttermost parts of the He got her saved. And the only exposure that they ever had to Christianity was that, uh, you know, she said her grandparents had raised her and they went to an Anglican church. So there was an Anglican church in their town and a Catholic church in their town. The other church up that way, um, yeah, like I said, was Catholic, but her, then her cousin got saved and then taught her the gospel and she got saved. And eventually she moved to Montreal and, her, and met her boyfriend, Aaron, who like I said, so he was, he's German and he spoke multiple languages. And uh, so they, but he, so he's German, but he's living in Montreal, which is a French-speaking area in Canada. So anyway, uh, so they drove five hours from Montreal to come to Toronto just to come to the Soul Winning Marathon so that they could learn how to preach the gospel. And, you know, just fellowship with the saints and to hear the Bible being preached in person. And, and it just really encouraged me to know that we think that the things that we do the small things that we do don't matter, but even just sharing like a Bible way to heaven on social media or mirroring other channels and things like that, they can make a difference. I mean, this couple came from, you know, I mean, obviously five hours is a long drive, but then, but really it's, she came from even further than that. And it really encouraged me because, you know, sometimes even pastors need to have their spiritually batter, spiritual batteries recharged. And I'm glad I went to that soul winning marathon. It was a blessing to me. It fired me back up for soul winning. Not that I don't love soul winning. I do love soul winning. But everybody can get into the, you know, it's, it's just kind of like it becomes a chore sometimes. Especially if you're not in a very receptive area, it can be like that. But I would just say this. We need to be faithful in the churches that we're at. Don't shun soul winning. Don't be a spiritual adrenaline junkie and just only go to soul winning marathons and things like that. But so bonds are good to go to. The other churches are good to go to. Look at Psalm chapter 2, verse number 8. Psalm chapter 2, verse number 8. The Bible says, Ask of me, and I will give thee heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. So, even, you know, in Psalm chapter 2, verse 8, obviously this is talking about the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, in the New Testament, this is where Jesus tells us. In Acts chapter 1, he tells us, hey, the uttermost parts of the earth. And that just means everywhere. But I would say it also means the farthest reaches of the earth. And I, I just, that's very encouraging to me. That, and it says he'll give him the, utter, the, the, the heathen for um, an inheritance to the uttermost parts of the earth. Now I'll turn to Matthew chapter 12, verse 41. We have a great um, responsibility to go and reach everybody. And obviously, you know, hold fast is what, uh, this is the second, is, this is the second anniversary. And I don't know, you know, what plans Pastor Bazarski has for missions later, but I'm sure that more, the more, the longer he's doing it, the more he's going to do, um, just like kind of all the pastors have done that are part of this movement. So Matthew chapter 12, verse 41 the Bible says, The men of Nineveh shall rise up with this generation and shall condemn it because they repented at the preaching of Jonas. And behold, a greater than Jonas is here. Sometimes we go to cities and we just do like a one big soul winning marathon. We get a whole bunch of people saved, but there's no church there after that. But like what I've learned from the Apostle Paul in the Bible is that sometimes he would just go to a place like um, Philippi. He gets one lady saved, Lydia, a celebration. He gets saved. Her whole house gets saved. They get baptized. Then they, then they have this demon-possessed lady come. And then she is, is harassing them and all this stuff. And then they, they cast that devil out of her. And then she was a gain for you know, the people of that city. They beat them. They throw them in jail. Then Paul stops the guy from get, committing suicide, gets him saved, gets his whole house saved and baptized. And then he throws them back in jail and then makes the the officials of the, of the town come and pull him out of jail themselves. But Philippi, you know, the book of Philippians is written to a church that was formed just because of going in that one time and getting these two big families saved. And so when we go to a, a city and we get a bunch of people saved, hey, great things can come from that. Great churches can be formed based upon just one little thing we do. 
And you know that story about the uh, the Inuit lady um, getting saved. Her, her and her cousin getting saved in the uttermost parts of the earth and then come down to go soul winning with us, like that's a great thing. Like p people take that as a small thing, but it's not a small thing because we know that the uttermost parts of the earth are being reached by the message of the gospel through efforts of, of pastors in this movement, from efforts of people in this movement. And it is, you know, people say the new IFB is dead or whatever. These bozos online will say that kind of stuff. But I think it's greater than it ever has been because the been balanced out. I mean, obviously, there's always going to be bozos surrounding us in some way, shape, or form. A lot of the weird people have left. So, you know, it's balancing out. And then there's so many activities going on right now that it's like people don't have the money or the time off to be able to go to all of it. And I understand that, you know. It's like, hey, we're doing this, we're doing this, we're doing this. It's like, well, we can't go to that, we can't go to that, we'll go to this. Go to something. Amen. Go to Be a part of it. Look at verse 42, Matthew chapter 12. It says, The queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. For she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And that's obviously the queen of Sheba. She came, she heard everything that Solomon had to say, saw all the great things, the ascent to the, to the house of the Lord, and the, you know, just all that stuff. And she had no more spirit left in her. She had all these hard questions and then they got answered. And she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear that wisdom. But, you know, the, the, that same lady that I was just talking about came from the uttermost parts of the earth to also, you know, try to complete that circle of the Christian life where, you know, being saved isn't enough. I mean, it's enough for us to go to heaven, obviously. But we're supposed to continue to work for the Lord. We are kings and priests unto the Lord our God. Amen. And what do priests do? They serve, don't they? And so we are a royal priesthood, and so we are supposed to serve the Lord. But she came from the uttermost parts of the earth, and it says, And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. Of course, we have the Lord Jesus Christ to tell people about, and that is you know, obviously greater than Solomon. But people will receive the message, and people will have their lives changed forever because of the work that we do as soul winners. Look at Luke chapter 24, verse 47. Luke chapter 24, verse 47. The Bible says, And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. So, does God want us to reach all nations? Amen. Absolutely. He wants us to reach all nations and beginning at Jerusalem. But this is your Jerusalem here. So, you know, the plan for us in the Bible is to reach our Jerusalem, you know, our Judea, our Sumeria, and then the uttermost parts of the earth. So, you know, I, I, I have a vision to reach um, Washington State, and we have four churches in Washington State now. So, but I want to go, I want to do more. You're like, Pastor, you're, you're doing enough, really. <laughs> but we're about to ordain, you know, one of our men as the pastor in England soon, and um, so then there will be an independent Baptist church there. I know that there's plans of a pastor going into Poland. There's plans, you know, there's already a church in Germany. And so we're kind of moving over to the European side of things. And I think that great things are still yet to come. Obviously, we're just scratching the surface in this movement. We've just kind of really begun to do great works. You know, the Philippines is being reached by Brother Stuckey. And other people, he's got like, I think he's, he's trying to compete with me right now. He's got three churches. Uh, <laughs> talk, about, talk about two more. So I could start a church at the end of the sermon. I mean, I, <laughs> don't make me mad. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so how do we recharge our soul winning batteries? Well, I'm just going to give you six really quick things. You're like, oh, man. <laughs> I'm going to do it fast. Galatians 6, 8. So the first thing is you ought to continue to soul win in your local church. Now, obviously, this is a great event. This is a perfect example of an event, but not everybody here goes to this church. But it's, you know, people that go to this church should definitely be here for an event that their church is putting on. But, you know, just the day in and day out soul winning at your church, you should stay involved in. Amen. And you're like, well, how's that going to recharge my batteries? Because in Galatians 6, 9, just look at Galatians 6, 9, it says, And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap 
if we faint not. So don't faint in your body. Don't faint in your mind. Don't get this black pill attitude about soul winning in your area. Have a great attitude about the soul in your area. You know what, we, we, we're not in the most receptive part of the world in Vancouver, Washington, but you know what, we get people saved every single week, Amen. and people still go out and get saved, and, and you know, people are getting saved. You know, and then you can add supplemental things to help, like if your area is not that receptive, we'll go to some place that is receptive. So the first thing is you ought to continue to soul win in your local church, and don't forsake your local church soul winning. So, number two, go soul winning at another church on like a church, I call it a churchcation. Before I was, you know, the, the leader in Verity Baptist Vancouver, I was just a soul winner going to church, but I like to go on what I call churchcations. I used all my vacation time just to go and visit other churches. I went and visited Pastor Jimenez, I went and visited Faithful Word, and back then there wasn't a lot of options, but... You know, we would just, I would use all my vacation time just to go to another church so I could go soul winning there and, and, you know, have fellowship and things like that. Romans chapter 16, go ahead and turn to Romans chapter 16. So I would say this, it's, I don't know, like, you can do whatever you want, but when your church is having a big weekend, don't go to somebody else's church. That, you know, be there to support your church. Amen. You know, it's a blessing to see this whole room filled with people that are ready to go and go soul winning on a marathon here. And I've heard that it's very receptive here. That's great. And, uh, you know, but, but if your church is having a big weekend, don't say, well, I'm going I'm to visit, you know, you know, First Works Baptist Church or something today instead. I mean, obviously you can do whatever you want, like I said. And if you already planned it well in advance, you know, I'm caveating that. But I'm just saying, if your church is having a big weekend, be a part of it. Amen. And be supportive to your pastor because it is a big deal. Look at Romans 16.1. It says, I commend unto you Phoebe, our sister, which is a servant of the church, which is at Centria, that you receive her in the Lord as become a saint, and that you assist her in whatever business she hath need of you. For she hath been a succor of many and of myself also. Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my, my helpers in, Jesus, in Christ Jesus, who have for my life laid down their own necks, unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. So, you know, Paul's writing this letter, and he's like commending people to, hey, th these people are visiting your church. Take care of them. Do good unto them. They're helping the cause of Christ. They're helping the churches of the Gentiles. And, you know, so it's when people come to visit your church, treat them nice, you know. Talk to them. You know, they're people too. <laughs> they might not be in your circle, but, uh, you know, be outgoing, you know. They're coming here on their own dime. You know, treat them right. I, I know Pastor Pizarski is going to do that. But just, you know, don't, don't uh, shun other people from other churches and be suspicious of them. They're, they're here to help, right? So number three, go to a conference where soul winning is done and get around other people like you that may be able to also sharpen you. So, of course, we have the Red Hot Preaching Conference that I, I haven't missed one of them yet. And turn to Ecclesiastes 12.9. So I think it's good for you not only to go church, soul winning into your own church to recharge your battery, but also go soul winning at other churches to recharge your battery. But don't forsake your local church. And then go to a conference where soul winning is done. Because most of the conferences that are held have soul winning going on. Pastor Menace has soul winning going on. We had a King James conference, but we still had soul winning going on. That's the great thing about this movement. It's not just a, a sit around and listen to, to great preachers preach. That's, that's, that's a great part of it. But also we're we're trying to help you get involved in the ministry and how to learn how to go soul winning if you've never been or maybe just experienced another place. I think it's cool going to other places. I like going to other places and going soul winning. And I, I think it's fun. I think it's, you know, it's, it's just every place is different. Every place, you know, the Bible, or not the Bible, but people say variety is the spice of life. And sometimes it's good to have some variety um, and, and get out and go to a soul winning church or go to a conference where great preaching is happening and soul winning is being promoted. Ecclesiastes 12.9 says, and moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge, yea, he gave good heed and sought out and set in order many proverbs. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words that which was written was upright, even words of truth. 
The words of the wise are as goads and as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies, which are given from one shepherd. So when you go to a conference, you're going to hear some goading from the, from the shepherds that are trying to inspire you to do better, inspire you to get sin out of your life. And so when you're going to like a great conference, you're going to get, not only are you going to get a lot of food and a lot of, uh, a, a lot of teachings from the Word of God, from great men of God, but you're also going to be able to have chances to go soul winning in another place. And that will recharge you. You know, going to a great conference is going to recharge you and, and, and hopefully recharge your soul winning batteries. Number four, go on a missions trip to a small town or another big city. Go on a missions trip to a small town or another big city. Look at Luke 8.1. Luke 8.1. I'm not going to give you time to get there. I'm just going to start reading. And it came to pass that when he went through out every city and village preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God, and the twelve were with him. So what did Jesus do? His custom was to go into, what does it say there? Every city and village. Every single one. Preaching and showing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. So he's preaching the Bible. He's also showing people the gospel and teaching people the gospel. So it is biblical to hit small towns. And you're like, well, what are we supposed to do? Leave our, our newborns in the dumpster or whatever and, and not give them a good church to go to. Well, it's better than not being saved at all, isn't it? Yeah. And so we're, our mission when we go so on is to get people saved. Obviously, we want the whole Great Commission to happen. But, you know, like I said, Philippi ended up getting a great church after just two families got saved. Number five, go on a foreign missions trip to another country. Go on a foreign missions trip to another country. I went to the Philippines and it was very fruitful. As a matter of fact, Brother RJ was my first soul winning partner and I realized pretty quickly that there was some language barriers, you know, they spoke English but maybe weren't, you know, understanding exactly how I was put in. Maybe I was talking too fast, I don't know. But uh, I just, RJ was just sitting right, sitting on a spot with a Bible in his hand and I'm just like, Come hear the gospel. Come hear the gospel. Come hear the gospel. Come, you know, over and over and over again. He probably barely could talk the next day, I'm sure. But how many, do you remember how many people you got saved that day? 16. I think it was more than that. <laughs> but maybe it was just, my wife had a, also a, a native speaker with her. Maybe we, I'm just thinking, that, I, I thought it was like over 30 people. But it was just, I, I just was, you know, it's not about me. It's about people getting saved. So I was just feeding them to them. Here you go. Here you go. <laughs> but that's what's great about going on a foreign mission trip where it's very receptive, you know, where people, we're trying to grab people and hook them to get them in the boat, but there they're just jumping in. It's like when you grab the nets, it's like 156 fish or whatever, <laughs> and they're all big, you know. So it's great to go, like Pastor Mejia is going to Belize in what, November, and that's been very fruitful. I think he's talking about starting a church there. And, you know, there's lots of great uh, things that can come out of a missions trip. So I'm not going to take the time to go to the verses, but uh, actually just John 4.35. John 4.35, I'll just read it for you while you're going there. It says, Say not ye, there are yet four months, and then cometh harvest. Behold, I say unto you, lift up your eyes and look on the fields, for they are white, all ready to harvest. This is in Jesus' time. We're talking about Jerusalem. I mean, it probably wasn't as receptive as a lot of other places in the world are today. Because, I mean, a lot of the Jews rejected him, right? And he always had this entourage that followed him that were just constantly bothering him. But Jesus said, you know, look, look up. You know, this is after he meets the woman at the well, and they're all off grocery shopping or whatever, and he just takes the time to personally lead some woman to Christ. And what happened as a result of that? A whole bunch of people from that town got saved, right? In Samaria, of all places, right? So number six, the last thing is to go on a trip to the uttermost place of the earth. Go to one of these places. You know, I, I've, I've actually yet to go to some remote village in Alaska or something, but I do want to do that. And, you know, if people get saved in the place, you know, in some Inuit village way up north, then people will get saved everywhere. Yeah. And, he, you know, in, in Psalm chapter 2, it says he'll give the, you know, the, the inheritance of the heathen to the Lord Jesus Christ. And, that, and I believe that wherever we go, wherever our foot, the sole of our foot goes, people will get saved when we go out and preach the gospel. So, you know, and the Bible says in Psalm 126, verse 1, it says, When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. 
Then said they among the heathen, The Lord hath done great things for them. The Lord hath done great things for us, whereof we are glad. Turn again our, our captivity, o, o Lord, as the streams of the south. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth, bearing precious seeds, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. So the Bible teaches that if we go out soul winning, we're going we're gonna to reap the harvest. Jesus said the, the, the fields are already ripe under the harvest. They're already white under the harvest. So when we go, people are going to get saved. But there's not a lot of laborers. You know, right now, we have a lot of laborers in this room. But compared to how big this city is, it's, it's, we, we never seem to have enough. Yeah. So we need all hands on deck for soul winning. Get behind your pastor. Get behind your, your pastor's soul winning vision. And, you know, when you, when you feel like you need to get a recharge, do one of these things that I've listed here, and you'll, you'll definitely get a recharge. If you go to a super receptive area, you're going to get a recharge. But don't just get all jaded about your area. I think it's very important. It's discouraging when a pastor has a soul winning program and then people don't show up for it. Yeah. But they'll go to other people's churches. So I'm just saying have balance. Don't, you know, support your pastor, support your soul winning program. But, you know, get, get out and go other places. The Bible, that's what Jesus told us to do, right? So let's get out there today and get some people saved. So whether it's a small town in the frozen tundra or a, 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 Pacific, a Pacific island atoll or a small island in the middle of the Pacific, there are plenty of places to choose from. Share the Bible Way to Heaven videos on social media. Mirror them on your platforms. And you, you, know, you never know when somebody's cousin is going to get somebody saved and that person's going to come to a great soul winning marathon and learn how to go soul winning and fellowship with the saints. So anyway, let's, let's pray. Lord, we thank you.